Hello, people. Welcome back uh, to Assembly Language uh, Programming in DOS. Uh, last time we looked at COM files, which were very primitive executable files uh, in the uh, early versions of DOS. Uh, they had no header, uh, and they could only be loaded into a single place in RAM, and they could only reference 64 kilobytes of RAM. So to get beyond those limitations, the executable file was created. And uh, the executable file had a header, and this allowed it to be located in different parts of RAM and uh, put, allowed for potentially uh, multiple um, applications to be loaded into RAM at the same time. Though uh, keep in mind that uh, there is no memory protection, so any program could write anywhere in memory, uh, including where other programs lived. Uh, the other thing that was an improvement for executables was they could address more RAM. So uh, now you might wonder, how could you address uh, more than 64 kilobytes if you only have 16-bit registers? Uh, well, the answer, of course, is to use two registers at once. Now, because making processors was very expensive, uh, Intel decided to make process, uh, to combine those two registers in such a way that you would have only 20 bits of address space, which means you could only address one megabyte of RAM. And Microsoft decided to give the bottom 640 kilobytes of that to uh, user programs, and then the uh, top uh, 360 uh, kilobytes to the system resources. And so this is where the infamous 640 kilobyte limit came from. Now, um, uh, this would, uh, in the future, people would come up with very clever ways of getting around the one megabyte limit. And of course, eventually 32-bit uh, processors were made, which could have large flat address spaces. But uh, what we're going to do today is take a look at an executable demo. Now, I copied this uh, demo from the, ex uh, the examples directory in FASMD. So you can do the same thing here and take a look at it. And so what we're going to do is open the uh, exe.exedemo.asm uh, file. Oh, it actually has some uh, other things that I had written some from before. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete these for now. And we'll bring this back. So this file has actually uh, is almost exactly the same as the previous file that we had, except that this file has as its header uh, format MZ. And so this uh, instruction tells FASM that we want to create an MZ executable program. And uh, that is a major difference, and that allows us to do all the things that we want to do. The other major difference is that there, uh, here we're using a different way of, uh, of uh, uh, exiting our DOS program. There's actually several different ways. Um, all are valid, but uh, the first one was kind of a really old way. Um, this is kind of a newer way, or well, newer compared to DOS. And uh, uh, this is probably even more standard way of, of, of exiting. Oh, the other thing that we'll want to do is we're still using this uh, system call 9, uh, for which writes a string that must be uh, terminated by a dollar sign. So we'll go ahead and build this and uh, run it. And it prints Hello World just like our previous program did. Uh, so what I want to do uh, is I want to modify this program to use a more modern uh, printing of strings. Now, because you normally don't want to deal with strings that are terminated by a dollar sign. In fact, very quickly, as soon as, uh, I think, as early as DOS 2.0, um, all of these, uh, fu these functions with dollar signs uh, weren't really used much anymore. Instead, there was a bunch of, um, or a series of uh, system uh, services that essentially copied the, uh, the kinds of system calls that Unix had. And so this is for reading and writing files and a bunch of other things. And so that's exactly what we want to use. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the browser here. And I'm going to show you that there's this uh, Ralph Brown's interrupt list, right? So you can go here on, on uh, the, the web. And uh, this will actually, actually let me uh, make this a little bit smaller so you can see it. 
There we go. And I'll bring myself up a little bit. Uh, here we go. There we go. So there I am. And we'll bring this over to here. So now, uh, so this is Ralph Brown's uh, interrupt list. Um, it's a great resource. It has a bunch of um, resources for all kinds of different things. Uh, if you go to, I believe, categories, there's a bunch of different categories. You can go to the DOS kernel and see all the DOS stuff there. You can also go back and do, uh, say, this interrupt here. And uh, this will give you all, a bunch of all the interrupts from 0 to FF. And if you pick 21 hex, um, it'll have all the DOS services. And so I've already pulled up one here uh, that's uh, re uh, write to file or device. And it tells you uh, when this thing was available. So this was available in DOS 2 and above. And it gives you a list of all the, um, all the registers that you need to fill out. And then it tells you what it will return. And so, and, it'll, and if there's an error, it tells you what flags are set and error codes that are returned. And so this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use this exactly as it's set here. So let's go back to our code. And uh, let's go ahead and comment this out. Whoops. Uh, and we'll comment this out. And then we'll uh, make some space for a new thing. And so we're going to do... Um, 40 hex instead of 9 and then we're going to move into bx uh, we're going to move into bx uh, the uh, the file descriptor right so standard in is 0 standard out is 1 so we're going to put this here so we're going to say write to file or device and then we're going to say here we're going to Whoops, we're going to say stood out, and then CX is going to be the number of characters that we want to write. And so the way that we can do this, um, we're going to actually modify our string a bit. Instead of terminating it with a um, dollar sign, we'll terminate it with a zero. And then I also wanted to show you creating uh, a variable. So we can create a variable called length. And uh, we can set it equal to the current address. So if we use a dollar sign here, that means the current address. And then if we subtract the address of hello, that will actually give us the length of the string. So then we can say length um, num uh, chars to write. And then we're going to say dx is going to contain the string. Um, the string we want to write, and then we can call our interrupt. And uh, if we haven't done any, uh, if we haven't made any mistakes, then this should, um, this should actually run. So we'll say phasm exe demo dot asm, and it com it uh, was able to assemble properly. So if we run it, um, it prints. So this is great. So let's go phasmd and open this up again. And so that's essentially what I wanted to show you today. Uh, we can now build executables. And a very interesting thing about these executables is that uh, to this day, these are the ancestors of the modern executables. And indeed, every... Uh, every executable, even in modern Windows 11, has a header that uh, follows this format. The very first part of every executable follows the, the same header format uh, as the one that is for these original executables, which is crazy. That, that shows you how like the backwards compatibility is uh, for these things. Uh, but that's it. Um, next time, we'll look into some more details of writing programs for DOS. And till next till next time.